Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here joined by Joe from Irish Abroad and Gary Spain, who is pretty much part of the furniture these days. Uh, we're here basically, we've just done the final word and we said we'll do a piece on the under 21s. They obviously beat Sweden last night 3 1 after being 1 0 down. Um, actually missed a penalty as well, but to show the, the character that they did to beat that Sweden side. Um, let's just talk about some of the players, like, and you know. I suppose the title of this video is going to be called how, like, just how good are these under twenty ones? I mean, there's so many of them that are, you know, either a good championship squad uh, teams or you know playing with Premier League teams. Albeit they're not getting first team football just yet. Maybe by Connolly, but uh, Ida's playing with Norwich. You know, uh, I imagine at some points during the season he'll get a run. Mm -hmm. Parrots obviously with with Spurs, he'll some at some point I reckon get a run. Uh, Connolly, I think he's going to get more uh, game time of all the forwards probably. Yeah. Afalabi has got just gone to Celtic. He looks very good as well. Um, then you got Jason Malumbi who's just gone on loan from Brighton to to Millwall and he looks really good. And Mix a big fan of his as well. Um, then you got Connor Coventry at West Ham as well. I'm not sure how he's getting on club boys. Do you know how? how he's I... he's had one appearance in the League Cup, but it was his first appearance oh, in the yeah, year. Oh yeah, that's right. So. Yeah. Um, he winds on pre-season tour with them. Um, their centre midfield at the moment is well, we know who one of them is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So whether or not he's going to get a run in the in the first team is um, is well remains to be seen. Uh, but he did win the the Dylan uh, Tom Tom Beads uh, award, which is for the the Academy Player of the Year. Uh, mm. last I season. did see him posing with that trophy with that player you just mentioned. Uh, yeah, before. yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so uh, the two of them looked really good uh, with him and Malone being centre midfield. Um, don't know if uh, uh, the FAI shared their the the heat map he, he, of his game against I think Armenia, did, yeah, yeah. and he covered every blade of grass on the pitch. Um, Malumbi had a very good heat map yeah. against Sweden too last night they put yeah, up too yeah. okay, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen it yet but uh, I, I, at the, uh, the game against Liechtenstein uh, or sorry Luxembourg in the in the, the, the first qual uh, qualifier I thought Malumbi covered every blade of grass in that game as well so it looks like we've got two really really strong box to box midfielders in centre midfield in the under 21 setup, and um, you know one of them alone and he could build a team around um, but the two of them make our centre midfield look Solid. Even with that, if Jason Knight at Derby as well, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he he's he's starting games and he yeah he's getting a lot of game ago, time you know. with Derby yeah yeah so Koku seems to really like him. and yeah. he's got Rooney coming in there who's going to be learning off soon enough as well, which can't be a bad thing. No, um, then you're kind of going in defence as well. You've got O'Shea at West Brom. He's kind of there thereabouts as well. Their manager seems to like him. Um, you've got yeah, Masterson. You have Leo Connor the, oh, the full back who was very good. He's a player I, I've seen from even from under-17 level now. He was at Man United. He just moved to Celtic on deadline day. and He was brilliant in the under-19 Euros as well. Yeah, and and, and even in the under-17s mm. in, in Croatia two years earlier. Yeah, yeah. He, capped, he, he captained us in, in Armenia. Yeah, and he played centre mid that, for, for yeah, that as well. So his yeah. versatility is very so, good as well. Um, yeah. I think he's a great player. He, he he didn't do a lot wrong, you know. Right? You've got him killed Kenny at Bournemouth as well. Yeah. Jesus, uh, I'm just just thinking of so many. I I do think Dara Lee for for a player playing League of Ireland, um, very 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 good. And I think at some point in the next year or two, I think he might move back across to England. I just I do think he's a standout player. Yeah, well. Zach Abuzi, who's El, the star El, 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 of the Waterford, yeah. Abuzetti, sorry, who's the star of the, the Waterford team in the League of Ireland. And you've Danny Mandrew as well at Bohemians, yeah. who's the, certainly the star of the he's North He's definitely up there in the top yeah. five players That's, in the absolutely. league. Absolutely. You know? I mean, I'm sure the Bose fans are probably screaming at me, eulogising Jack Bourne the last time. But uh, Danny Mandrew has been superb this season as well, particularly going forward. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And Kelleher as well. Did you see him? Uh, he, he, he's playing around with the uh, ball of feet a little bit. He might give us a couple of heart attacks when he's a little bit older, <laughs> but hopefully not. But he looks very, very good. You've got Bazunu in there as well, who travelled with Man City. On their trip as well, he's only seventeen or something like. So there's so many good players in there. Masterson scored a great header against the uh, the Swedes as well. I suppose the can you get the, the list up as it's just see if we've missed anyone else there. Just kind of oh, Troy Parrot. <laughs> Nathan Collins not even yeah. uh, there. He's been injured. We did say Troy, yeah. but he's at Stoke. He's captain Stoke at eighteen. Yeah. Uh, I know he's he's been injured. Uh, Scales Liam Scales from UCD. I think he's gone to Bristol at some point. I'm not sure when, but mm -hmm. he did have that trial at Man City. Neil Farouge still has to come back there. Who just yeah. signed Jamal Rovers. 
Uh, Connor Rowland has to come back in there with yeah. Wolves. These there's so many yeah. players that are just like and I seen a tweet today saying like what the fuck has Noel King been doing the last ten years? Like most of these players are all homegrown, you know. Uh, and then I think I don't think really there's anyone we're really missing there. Uh, no, not that I can think of. Um, no, that's that's pretty much it. But like. Did, did you see the goals from the game last night? Yeah, I mean, I was there on Friday night at the Armenia oh, yeah, game too, yeah. and uh, I, I was just following updates in the Aviva last night and I, I, I've since watched the goals back. But we got, we actually then, were, yeah. we were downstairs in the in the media room in the Aviva and uh, all the journalists and everybody over there, we all had dodgy streams on one side of the room were 10, <laughs> 10 seconds slower than the other and they knew when Aaron Connolly missed the penalty and we didn't or whatever but uh, I just think the fight in that team like and you do remember a lot of these players were playing that under 17 tournament that got uh, remember the Jimmy Corcoran was the keeper and, yeah. he, and he got sent off and off his, that team and they went to, at the Netherlands they they were a goal down Troy Parrott scored in that game and yeah. they showed a lot of fight and character in that team and they just seemed to just seemed to love playing for Ireland and they just seemed to be a very tight knit group the whole lot of them like they all like I know social media social media whatever but they all seem to be you know they all comment on each other's stuff there's loads of stuff like Cam Ledwidge was another player uh, who's very good at Southampton uh, le- I think he's a left full or a left winger he can play both he played in the uh, 19s as well really good player um, but they're all sending each other messages and all. They all, they all really like, uh, seem to want each other, and they all dro- seem to drive each other to do well. Like even look at the strikers now. Afalabi was on. You know, Troy Parrott was benched. Um, he came off the bench, scored two it's goals, two. Yeah. two cracking goals as well. And it just seems to be. I said to you the other night, he didn't look. Uh, I didn't think he looked ready for for international football. And then he goes and does that last night, and then looks totally ready. <laughs> Uh, you know, so it, it, I don't know what it was. Maybe I just thought maybe it was his first under twenty one game. I just think maybe you know on another night those chances that he got goes in and he looks a, a much better player. I, I never thought he was bad, mind you. I'm just saying I just thought the physicality wise, he's he he's still he's taken a bit of a growth as well. He looks a lot taller than he was when I last seen him uh, at the player of the year. He won the, the under sixteen player of the year, uh, yeah. but he looked a bit smaller then. But Obviously, seventeen now, and he's taking a bit of a stretch. But he uh, on the night against Armenia, I was just thinking like, oh, I don't know if if the full physicality of a of a proper international would would suit him right now. And I thought maybe Connolly would be more suited to it. Yeah, no, well, I think was the, the time, I, I think it was the right decision to to leave him with the under twenty ones rather than oh, play yeah, against yeah. Bulgaria. I think it's been proven by the result. Um, Troy has probably been a star since under. I actually saw him play uh, under 15s against Turkey, and uh, he was already being talked up at that stage. And uh, there was before I think he was already linked to Tottenham, or I think he was. I can't remember exactly, but he was. Um, he was at Belvedere. He was. I think yes, Belvedere. Wrong, and, uh, no, he wasn't. Um, yeah. Um, they're so, always sharing uh, some uh, There's pride uh, and joy. And Troy was de- def- that, the definitely the star of the under seventeens. That team that, was, as you said, was beaten by Holland and that disgraceful penalty shoot. I think Collins was part of that team as well. Nathan Collins, I think. He yeah, was, I think he, he, might he, have he was. Yeah. And uh, but Troy was the star. I mean, he scored was it three goals? I think from what I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but certainly he, scored against coming the to a point that we're getting so much momentum that RT actually covered that last game, and Martin yeah. O'Neill was actually at that game. He was, yeah, yeah. He was gone mad at the ref about mm, the yeah. percentage. Yeah. Yeah. So he went one down, good thing he did. I think he, he went out. Scored a equaliser in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he went out onto the pitch and all. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, after so, the game to give out to the yeah, ref. Yeah, yeah, no, I was there. I was actually oh, yeah, watching. Jeez, yeah. what's he gonna do? Where does he not be? Like, it's not everything. Literally. So, um, where was yeah, that tournament on? That was in England. Mm. Oh, okay, so that yeah. that game was at Chesterfield. Okay, so, um, but he even in qualifying in qualifying for that quarter final against the Dutch, who went on to win the tournament, by the mm-hmm. way, and you you never get a bad a bad Dutch side at underage level. True. Um, we beat Denmark, and uh, I think we beat Bosnia, if I remember correctly, and so we. It was really. It, it's been an impressive group. Um, Aaron Connolly is, is is another star. He's got a real. Um, he's just a ball of energy, and he's got so much talent. He's been a bit unlucky with injuries this year, and uh, he got his chance in Toulon, and uh, he played very well for for Stephen in in Toulon. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's brilliant that he's he's already uh, played playing for Brighton, and uh, he. Probably next in line now for the uh, 
uh, for the Premier League squad if anyone gets injured or maybe he could even force his way in. Yeah, the thing about it is, I was talking to Shane Dawson, who works for Air Sport uh, yesterday, and he was saying that he spoke to Connolly and he doesn't like playing on the, on the, on the left hand side. He's like, play me through the middle. That's my best okay. position. I hate playing wide or something. So it's interesting that Kenny hasn't played so well on that left hand side, if that is the case. If he just wants to be down the middle, obviously he's doing it for the sake of the team or whatever. But Connolly, he looks like. Um, like when you watch him play, and I remember watching him in the Toulon tournament, when I remember putting up a tweet or something saying, he looks like a right horrible bastard to play against. I love it. And I meant that in a complimentary yeah. way. Like, I, I loved it. But I actually spoke to him on Friday night, and he's actually the nicest young fella you'll meet. He's a really nice young fella. So, so there you go. Like, he just yeah, he looks like a, he wants to He's just probably it. a different personality on the yeah. pitch. Yeah, yeah. He, he reminds me of Damien Duff, and the first, he's probably the first player I can look at in a green shirt and say, and hopefully he'll be as good as Timmy and Tom. Yeah. But I mean, it's that kind of uh, that kind of energy, that kind of action, and uh, just yeah, he's all go, up, all go, all go, a ball of energy. Yeah. And he, and the thing is, yeah. is he'll actually whip a ball across as well. He won't just stop, cut in, and try and shoot all the time. He does try to get balls in. He okay. set up Troy the other night. I'm pretty sure he had a part to play in the uh, the Troy Parker. I know Afalabi done well. And then the ball obviously rebounded out to Troy and he took it first time. It was a great finish. Yeah, yeah, and he won a penalty as well. And and, and unfortunately, the Swedish keeper made a superb save. It was a great save. It was fair. a great save. It was. You know, I, I was following it on UEFA.com. And yeah. you don't, obviously, I, I, I my um, 4G wasn't good enough to get a, a, screen, a, a stream on my phone. So I was only following the updates, but I've watched it back since. But uh, yeah, it was it was a superb save. Yeah. And I thought Masterson's header was very, it reminded me of like a Richard Dunn or kind of a John O'Shea type of, yeah. So, yeah. So like typical centre-halves, you know. Yeah, I, I think he's more like of a, him. he's more of a, I wouldn't say Richard Dunn now, I think. Oh, no, yeah, it's the type of header. Or the type of header maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, Conor Masterson uh, is more of a ball-playing centre-half. Yeah, center no, I'm not comparing yeah. his, uh, okay. his, uh, his, um, so, his, his, his playing ability or anything. Yeah. I'm not comparing that. It's yeah. just the header itself. I love those types of headers, okay. you know. That's all. He's someone I'd like to see get a lot of game time. Um, because okay, he's been at Liverpool and he got a fantastic grounding there. But I just wonder had he been out on loan and spent uh, got a few games under his belt in the lower leagues and just yeah. To so you want really, to just get as much experience, just probably, to get even just to just get some experience. Yeah, I mean we're talking about Jack Bourne. I mean Jack Bourne. You you mentioned the clubs, the Wiggins, the Oldhams, the Blackburns. Yeah, went over and played in Holland. He's been kicked off. I don't haven't seen too much. He's been kicked on a lot or, around England and up to Kilmarnock, where they don't play any football up in Scotland, really. Sorry, yeah. but uh, you know, he. I mean, he would have. He would have been kicked off in the air in uh, <laughs> certainly in Kilmarnock anyway. But uh, you know, and and that would certainly toughen him up. And uh, it, it, it's shown. It's shown in him. You know. But, uh, I think like the comparison. Well, when I was at the game in Luxembourg between Manchester and O'Shea. Was was you could see, or Daryl O'Shea had been out on loan at Exeter. You could see the difference that that first team football had made to him. Masterson, while when he had the ball at his feet, he looked more comfortable, but he just seemed to be like a, a little bit short, a little bit uh, behind the the whatever play was going on in front of him. It was Daryl O'Shea was getting right in there and stuck in it every time. And like I know he said, that Masterson is a ball playing. Uh, center half, he said that. <laughs> but I think O'Shea is more of a he's a stopper. Um, you yeah, know, he's uh, he's uh, and you know, he's made his debut at West Brom now, and obviously, they've got Billich in charge. And if you want to learn how to play that sort of defense, that's the man to learn yeah. from. And he seems to be a very big fan of his as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Billich does. He's, he's had him either on the bench or he's been playing, so he, he and he's a big boy too. Mm. Um, I like him as a. Uh, I like them all. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the trouble. Yeah. It's just uh, you know, if if even five or six of them can come true, you know, if all of them can come come true, that'd be great. But if you know five or six of them really, you know, make it at a at a at a you know a good club, let's not forget that uh, Luke Connell was also hanging around in the squad. There he was he was in Tala on Friday as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of making up about him. Oh, will he play for England? But he is in, a, in amongst that group or whatever and I think he's in good company there because he's got Celtic teammates now with Daffa Labby mm -hmm. and uh, O'Connor and I do think that you know I I wouldn't be surprised as you've got Barry Coffey there as yeah. well but he's not as a coach yeah so I do think you're going to see a lot more Irish players probably going to Celtic and mm -hmm. whether they improve with Celtic together or whether they go to Celtic and maybe move on from yeah. Celtic after time with that okay. time will tell with that but 
I do think Afalabi, I do think Leo Connor are going to be very good players going forward. Yeah, and hopefully uh, they'll get a chance to to impress. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, I mean, Celtic don't have too many strikers that you know blow your mind. They've probably got Lee Griffiths and Edward, and then probably next in line could probably be Afalabi, depending on how he does. Uh, you were saying that Celtic signed, I think, four fullbacks. I think they signed four fullbacks, which I was delighted when I saw Leo Connor was going there. But I, I was maybe a little bit disappointed he was leaving. But Man United were letting him go. But yeah, they signed four fullbacks, I think, on deadline yeah, day. So they got he, another player from yeah. Man City as well. And uh, like looking at the reaction on Twitter, a lot of United fans were shocked that Leo Connor yeah, had so that, was was allowed to leave. But you know, they did spend fifty million on Juan Bissaka. He's in the England squad. Was he going to get ahead of him at uh, Adam Trafford? Maybe not. You know, we don't know what the what he was told to, at Celtic, but you know, he didn't go there to, to sit in the bench or play for the academy team. So you know, we uh, I do hope to see him playing in uh, at, at Celtic Park for the, even you know in the next couple of weeks. Um, like just in regards, because we've like, it's ridiculous endless amounts, and it's great to see. Obviously, there's a lot of positivity there. But is there anyone else gonna um that maybe feel shoved? Be trying to break into that squad. Obviously, Obafemi is kind of. I think he's more so going to be a senior player yeah. because he's playing Premier League football as well. Yeah, it's 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 rare to see a player make a senior debut and then go back and play in the under twenty ones. And if he is playing Premier League football and he seems to be in the first team picture at Southampton this season, it would be hard to see him go and play for the under twenty ones. And we're in the the bizarre and rare position where we have three or four really really good strikers in that underage squad so it means okay we can let Obafemi go and play for the for the senior team um you know there's a lot of players that didn't make the under 21 squad um that could still uh, appear for them before the, the the qualifying series is over like uh Tyreek Wilson is at Man City um you know Barry Coffey at Celtic um so I think the real question is like I mean are we looking at the under twenty one squad that can qualify for the championship for the first time, and are we, in a, in a year's time, you know, before the qualifying series is over, are people going to be asking should we leave Stephen Kenny there? Could you know can he bring the, the team that he's brought this far to the to the championships as well? I know he is uh the the he is going to be the next senior manager, um, but it, it would be a shame really if he is if he doesn't get to take the squad. To the, to the finals for the first time having done, having done so much work to get into that position yeah. well if it goes to plan he'll actually be leaving in the middle of the campaign yeah because there'll still be qualifiers and potentially well play playoffs or hopefully we'll win the group but we love a playoff yeah. <laughs> so that they're a little easier to understand the under 21s but yeah i mean the finals are in june 2021 so uh if all goes to plan he'll be national mm. team manager for a year at that stage yeah. so he won't be going to hungary or slovenia but hopefully we we will be going then mm-hmm. i do think it's a it's a good point to make though as well you look at a our under 19 team that went to armenia and i think we were missing maybe 13 players or was it that amount of let me be 11 well, players yeah there was uh, and they were all bumped up well some of them we were unlucky with injuries some couldn't get released by clubs yeah and uh yeah i mean we were missing so many players as you said but a lot of them would take that mentality. They were unbeaten, I'm pretty sure, when they went yeah. to in qualifying. Yeah, we won. We won every match in qualifying. Yeah. I think, if I remember correctly, we won all six games in yeah. qualifying. The only team to do that, and we beat yeah. the, the same Dutch team that had knocked us out at under 17 level in the in the, the first qualifying group. Um, and we went to to Russia, won all three games, including uh, beating, beating the, the home team yeah. in the in the last game. Um, and got to the semi-finals then i mean went to armenia and got to the last four at, at under 19 level um so i mean that's quite an achievement yeah but i do think tom mohan deserves a lot of credit as well because yeah. for the team that yeah. he went with you know there was you know they were saying that they were to the bare bones i also for, forgot to mention i did uh brandon kavanagh I can't get into the team from shamrock rovers who played uh the under 19s tournament mm-hmm. as well, but he actually played in Kenny's first squad. I think he scored against uh, the friendly game. He scored for the under 21s, but I think he had just an all kind of oh, domestic yeah. team. Yeah. Um. So he played in there as well. So there's still the likes of him to come in there and do well as well. Matty Everett and all these kind of players who went from the 17s to the 19s as well. Seamus Kyo, he wasn't in that squad, but he was captain of the under 17s. Andrew Omo Omo Bamidelli looks very good at Norwich as well. 
So there's players there, you know, that are coming through as well underneath the 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 twenty ones that could still mm-hmm. make it. Well, they they won't be they won't be there for a couple of years, I don't think. But you know, Omo Bamadeli's at Norwich. You know, uh, James Kyo is at Southampton. Now. So they're getting proper yeah. academy coaching. It's, well. it's starting so, to feel like. I mean, I remember with the, the I'm old enough, <laughs> we all the lads. But after the the end of Jack's reign, things took a bit of a, a downturn. But in the late nineties, uh, we played a I mean, the cup. The senior team played over in uh, in the Czech Republic. I think it was in Olomouc, mm-hmm. and you had the likes of Damien Duff, Robbie Keane. Uh, so it was this the sixteens and eighteens that had won won the UA for tournaments. Mm, Andy uh, Reid, John O'Shea, Andy Reid, John O'Shea, Richard Dunn. They all uh, and and there was actually a couple of players that were fantastic talents that just were unfortunate with injury and everything. Thinking of particular Liam George, who was yeah. never unfortunately. Just, Wes Hulhans Oidel is cousin Thomas Morgan as well. Yeah, Thomas Morgan was in the the team that went to Malaysia. I'm pretty sure in ninety seven in the World Cup, you know. And uh, but at that time there was just a crop of players came together and and came through and it's starting to feel like that again. You're looking at I mean we haven't talked too much about Adam Ida as well. Um, yeah, I just think the only reason we probably didn't is because he didn't light the place up as much as everyone probably thought he was going to. But there was so much talk about everybody else. But I do when we will talk about him now that you mentioned him. Um, I do think the key thing about the team as well is that there's so much players that, that can be rotated like Troy Parker could go centre forward he can play in the 10 he can play left he can play yeah. right Connolly can play through the middle you know if he if he does out, uh, oh, Afalabi can play him there there's yeah. so much rotation which is really really good because you think about if we take one player out of our team now the national team you're like well who kind of it's like square pegs uh, square pegs and round holes do you know what I mean but uh, now to go to go back to, to your point like I, I really like Adam uh, Ida or Ida whatever Either I'm either. not sure. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but it, like, I I'm not worried about me. I do think that he'll come good. You know, I I, I like him as a player. I've seen a couple of people saying, oh, I don't know if he's up to it. But I, I mean, it's it's hard to judge. I, I I've seen him now, and I'll tell you, I, I he didn't have a great tournament in in England in the under seventeens last year. That he he had done very well coming into it and missed a lot of chances, and his confidence was down, and that's where Troy came to the fore, and he was probably the star of that tournament. Uh, Adam did very well in Toulon and really seemed to be blossoming under uh, under Stephen Kenny. Yeah, M- maybe not so good. I on, did watch him a bit, a good bit yeah. in Toulon. So um, to tell you. yeah, maybe not so good on on Friday night. But he, he he's in the Norwich first team squad and he he has he has the physique, he has the talent, and uh, he can score goals. So he's got a real chance in my opinion. Anyway, I mean, I think. Because as you say, like the other the other strikers are, are taking a lot of the, or there's a lot of hype around the other strikers. Maybe people aren't are are letting uh, whatever Ida does um, slide a little bit. I think you have to remember he is still only I think he's only eighteen. Yeah, so, and he it looks he, about twenty one. Yeah, yeah, and he's playing at a scene he's playing yeah. under twenty football and he's made his de- his senior debut for Norwich and you know, they, they offered him a new he signed a new contract with them uh, only just recently. So they clearly think he's he's one for the future. Um, I mean, the worst thing you could say, I think, about him is that you know, he might have been promoted ahead of his ahead of his time. Um, that's you know maybe he could he's possibly in that that's uh he's too good for the under nineteens, but he might not not be quite good enough for the under twenty ones just yet. Um, but uh, like he he in his debut for Norwich in the in the League Cup, uh, he was playing up front. I think he had a couple of chances. Like he hit, he hit the post or he had one great chance that was saved. Um, and it was just unfortunate not to score, but he is in the first team picture at Norwich, and you know he had a great season for them last or for their their academy team last season. So, um, you know, again, it's he scored twice in his against Luxembourg as well, and I think you know yeah. people say, oh, maybe he's not good enough for under twenty one level. He's already scored twice under twenty one level. So you know, let's just uh, let's give him a chance. Uh, another guy actually is Gavin Kilkenny as well. At, I was going to say at, at Bournemouth, him. who's um, he, he's got bags of skill, and uh, he hadn't really come to my attention to be honest from watching the the underage sides, but he's made first team appearances in Bournemouth and he, he, he played does against look... Leon in the friendly in pre-season, got a man of the match and scored a goal. Yeah, and, uh, and that was the, well, I don't know if it was their first team, but it was definitely a strong Leon squad team in the in the in pre-season. Yeah, he reminds me of a young Wes Houlihan, so hopefully he'll come through with Wes's talent. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, look, uh, Joe Hodge happened. as well. Don't forget as well. Yeah, country. actually, and, and another uh, star of the the seventeens uh, yeah. and the nineteens. City, you yeah. know, and and the nineteens. Yeah. yeah. And well, unfortunately, he's picked up a pretty nasty injury. I think he's just had an operation, so he's going to be out until the new year. So he he we won't see him for the, the under the under twenty ones, and we're not going to see him for the under nineteen qualifiers in uh, in November either, which is a shame. But uh, you know, we wish him all the best in his recovery, and yeah. you know, we hope to see him back soon. Hundred percent. Yeah, we have actually, don't, don't forget, we've got the games actually coming up. And I mean, the, the Italy under 21 game is on the 10th of October in Tala. Mm. Well, so that'd be tough because Moise Keane's playing for them. Yeah, everything's new struggle from Juventus. Right, he's so playing for them and he's they, very good. They'll be very good. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you, you rarely see a bad Italian underage side. So, but that's in Tala. And unfortunately, I'm going to miss it because I'm on route to Tbilisi. <laughs> but it's that's the problem with the, a lot of the under 21s clash. And uh, well, for, uh, we'll keep you updated now. So, we have, we have Sweden at home in Tala as well in November. Uh, the reverse match and the under 19 qualifiers I'm pretty sure we're actually hosting those in yeah. November I, I can't I, I don't think I've seen the venue actually because I did check it mm-hmm. and I couldn't find venues for that I, I'm certainly hoping they're around Dublin or within easy reach but of yeah. course they could be anywhere in the country so if anyone knows maybe give us a shout out where they're on <laughs> there's, there's been some talk that you know maybe we, sh- we should move the, the Italy qualifier from Tata to Aviva Stadium you know obviously there's not going to be a senior interna- home international in October, so you know, should we take advantage of the the level of interest that's around the under twenty one squad at the moment, and maybe get a bigger crowd into to Aviva Stadium than we get at Tallaght Stadium? But I'm not really sure that we would. I mean, I think there was no, three and a half. There wasn't that many. Then, yeah, than three and a half. half, half, half. half. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, keep it in Tallaght Stadium. You, you know, there could be a, a a bigger crowd again, maybe five or six thousand at it. But when you think about it, five or six thousand in Aviva Stadium, we'd be lost in there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I do think as well is that, you know, maybe if we, if we could try and maybe bring some atmosphere into the 21s games, it might lift them a little bit because there was times where it was flat there and there was no atmosphere them for the players to kind of, you know, spur them on, which I thought maybe if you get, I don't know, behind the goal where the where the newsstand is, you know, if you have people there chatting or whatever that, that normally go to the senior games or whatever from the singing section that might be an idea yeah why not i mean i i would like to see bigger crowds supporting the on 21s and the women as well mm-hmm. women have a crucial yeah. game against ukraine two days before the italy match yeah and that's in tal as well and you, you kind of hope we get I mean, a it's, similar it's, similar crowd for the women's and the 21s yeah. i thought from, it's what, a, from what i've seen it's a fiver in for fiver in for adults it's free in the season ticket i think all under 16s are free as well yeah um yeah, come on, come out and support. And see the, see the yeah. stars of tomorrow, really, you know. Yeah, yeah that's. Um... Yeah, I think I think that's been it. It's been a great chat about them, to be honest. I, I mean, sorry if we did miss anyone out. Like, let us know in the comments if this is a player that you really like and we maybe didn't give uh, enough credit to. Um, let us know your thoughts anyway in the comments. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Check out Joe's Irish Abroad page and uh, our Twitter page and website as well uh, if you haven't already, because this is fantastic work. Gary, fo- follow Gary on Twitter because <laughs> Gary's the guru of, uh, of Irish football. And uh, yeah, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll speak to you all soon. And if you have any other recommendations of stuff you'd like us to speak about, drop it in the comments and let us know. Thanks very much for watching.